Hello friends, this video on conservation of plants and animals part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about biosphere reserves. Now as I had mentioned before that these are larger when compared to national park or wildlife sanctuaries. These are protected larger areas of natural habitat. So here on the picture you can see that the natural habitat of animals, a big area of land is protected. And again here also you have the same restrictions like prohibition from hunting, poaching or deforestation. So all these things are not allowed in biosphere reserves as well. Now these are so big that they may include one or even more national parks and sanctuaries and they provide protection against protection to plants, wildlife and also to human communities. Like you would have often seen that there are many tribal people who live within forest areas. So forest areas in the sense in a kind of biosphere reserve. So here these human communities are also allowed to inhabit in this region. So animals are protected and saved here. So they include other protected areas within it. Other protected areas could be national park or sanctuaries. So let us take one example. So here you can see Panchmari Valley which is there in uh, Madhya Pradesh. So in this Panchmari Valley, this is Panchmari Bio Reserve. In Panchmari Bio Reserve, the total area is very huge. So this is the total area, this much acres is the total area of Panchmari Bio Reserve. So you can imagine how big it is. Now when we were talking about the uh, national park, I told that it has to be minimum 1000 hectares. So now when you look at such a huge figure, you can imagine how big a biosphere reserve could be. And this Panchmari Bio Reserve, it includes the Satpura National Park within it. So that is one thing within the uh, Panchmari Bio Reserve. It also includes Bori Wildlife Sanctuary. So Bori Sanctuary is also a part of it. And it also includes Panchmari Sanctuary. So Panchmari Sanctuary is also a part of it. So these three things are included inside the Panchmari Biosphere Reserve. So here you can see another example of a biosphere reserve in Uttaranchal that is Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve. So these are like huge stretches of land inside which you have multiple uh, national parks or sanctuaries and even some small areas which are inhabited by uh, tribal people. So now that we have discussed the various protected areas, let us talk about flora and fauna. What is flora and fauna? So the plants inhabiting a particular area is called flora and the animals inhabiting a particular area is called fauna. So these are the two terms which are used for plants and animals. So how did these terms come into existence? So fauna is derived from a Latin word where called faunus. So Faunus is a Roman goddess of earth and fertility. So from there, so many people say that, that it is it has been derived from that name of the Roman goddess Faunus. So Fauna is for all the animals and Flora is for all the plants. So these terms Flora and Fauna was coined by it. The term was given by Linnaeus. So the same scientist who was also involved in the process of classification of plants and animals. So somewhere around 1745 these terms were coined, flora and fauna. So when you talk about one particular area, let us suppose I talk about a biosphere reserve, say um, Panchmari Biosphere Reserve. So the plants which are present in Panchmari Biosphere Reserve and the animals present there are called flora and fauna of Panchmari Biosphere Reserve. So that's how we use these terms. So let us take some examples. So every region, that is every protected area, whether it is a national park or a wildlife sanctuary, everything will have its own specific flora and fauna because these national parks are located in different areas and different areas have different climatic conditions. So the type of animals or plants which survive there are also different. So for instance, let us take the example of Ralnathambur National Park, which is in Rajasthan. So if you talk about the flora and fauna of Ranathambur National Park, so talking about the flora, 
that is the plants which we see here some of the common plants which we see here is the wild date palm so that is one plant the people tree the huge people tree the banyan tree so these big plants are often seen here the bed which we call bed in hindi it is the indian jujube so these type of plants are very common so they form the flora of ranathambur national park talking about the fauna what kind of animals do we see here we see here tigers it is quite famous for tigers in fact we also see some new varieties of cats like the leopard cat cat which looks like a leopard we also see the jungle cat we see sloth bear we see jackals so these are some of the animals which are very commonly seen in ranathambo national park like crocodiles python spotted deer nilgai these are some of the very common fauna so that that's how we define flora and fauna of a particular area now how does that benefit how, why do we want to know flora and fauna of a particular area because with that we are able to know that some because there are some animals which are exclusively present in one area so we get to know that okay these animals are present only in this area so we need to give special attention to those animals that they do not reduce in number because if they reduce in number and finally if they reduce to zero there are no other places where the same animals are found therefore it is very important to make a note of flora and fauna of various region thank you please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again